I'm creating one object, but right now I can't create another. And here, the same. Um, but my loop only went for one. That's kind of strange. I'm not sure why. Also, I will add a drag behavior to make sure. Because right there, okay, I have more. So let's click on this object. I move it a bit. So yes, I'm clicking at the moment. It's not creating yet again another object. Else it would have appeared there. And so from now, what I will do is actually, yet again, it's for picking. When I will be right clicking on a sprite, and this time I will be changing it to pick by unique UID of the sprite child. Here it is. So when I create um, a new sprite to object, when clicking on a sprite, I'm keeping the a reference the UID to the new sprite 2 inside of the first sprite, the blue sprite. And when I will be right clicking the blue sprite, I want to destroy actually the sprite 2. So destroy. Mm -mm -mm. Destroy. Where is it? It's here. And I'll be also sure to set the value child back to zero. Otherwise, we couldn't create a new sprite too. So here it is. I'm creating a new sprite. It's working. And right click on the blue sprite. It's gone. And so I can click it again. I can't left click it. Right click it. That's working. So yeah, it's the ba basic of picking, thanks to instance variable. And uh, if you want to find more about picking, you can go back and check the Ian's video. It's far more, it has better examples, a bit more worked. So it's kind of nice. What I like to do also with the instance variables is use them so yeah, I will save this one. My quick picking example. And I will modify it into another example. Now I will want to actually uh, create a fire rate so the sprite to I will put a bit of different behaviors to it I will put bullet and I will put a destroy outside of layout here it is and now I will modify this one fire rate and uh, fire time. So for now I have what I want is my sprite will be a cannon. It takes two N I guess in English. If it's not, excuse my French. And bullets. So here it is. The cannon I want it to shoot every one second. So what I will be doing right there I just get rid of everything. I will every tick add cannon add to fire time. I will a add the DT system expression, which is uh, actually the time that passes between the drawing of two frames of two ticks when you are executing your game. Uh, 
Oh, I've see, I see a question on the chat. So if you left click twice, then right. Let me get back to the other example. Oh yeah, of course. So I will save this one. Uh, come on. Save this one as Canon Fire. I will get back on it. And coming back on the quick picking example. So the question is, if you left clicked twice, then right, would it destroy the second instance as it is that ID? Uh, not sure to understand the question, but let's try it. If you left quick click twice, I can't click twice. Actually, one click creates the object. But as I've checked, I've made a, a condition that child has to be equal to zero right there. Uh, and that ad on the creation of the sprite, I am um, assigning another value that is d different to zero to the sprites. Uh, I can't actually click twice on the... I'm I'm double clicking at the moment but it's creating only one instance and from the moment I'm clicking right it destroys the instance and puts it back to zero so it destroyed the second instance right there if I'm alternating right and left you know it destroys the instances here it is I hope it answers the question. No, sorry, no need to be sorry. It's okay. Uh, there can be there can be issues depending on how you you put your events, but uh, in that precise example, I guess it's it's okay. So closing it and coming back to my fire rate example. So what I will want, yes, is the cannon to be shooting uh, bullets on a regular basis so it will go so as I said every, t uh, every tick I will be adding, adding the value of DT to fire time and then I will be checking that when fire time is greater or equal to rate. then the action will appear and so I will be creating an object or either even spawning. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where is it? Where is it? Mm. Can't see it. Oh, I mean the condition. Canon spawn another object here it is bullets layer zero it's okay and i will also need to set the value of fire time back to zero and so if i'm pressing f5 here i have a fire rate that shoots a bullet every second because because uh, of the way i've set it everything so that I've just put one there and that when I'm adding DT over the span of one second it um, it adds up to one in the end so what I can do right now is add a few buttons I will go with a plus and minus again button 1, button 2 and also have a text object to see my current fire rate as I'm going. So every tick I will also set the text text to canon dot fire rate uh, yeah fire rate and when I will be clicking on the button 
Uh, so I think button is the plus, yes. So when I'm kicki clicking on plus in Canon, I will be adding one to fire rate and in the same order of ID when I'm clicking on button two I will be subtract subtracting one from fire rate. I will go with actually 0 0.1 oh come on so it will be a bit more progressive or I could go the yeah zero five. Zero five is, is better. So here it is. So one second. Here the span the spawning time is a bit longer. Here it's a bit quicker. Now I will go to zero so it will shoot in continue every half second every second every second and a half every two seconds etc etc mm, yeah okay so Yan is giving me another example as we go so I will save the cannon fire and make a new project yet again and so yes it's a nice little trick is used in one of his project and it's pretty interesting indeed and it has to see with instance variables one of the issue if you want with buttons is that you can't actually refer to its text like if I'm adding an event right there and trying to check for its text I don't have a compile text it's not it's not possible um, so I need also to add a function here it is function there and I will make uh, a few function not really I'll make a few basic function and have a text to display the result of the functions. Um, so add an event function on function and I will name it say hello and when say hello I will happen text new line um, yes it's okay new line and hello here it is I will make another function how are you and me too thanks So yes, we have the names of our function on the left and what the function does is strictly adding something into our text object. And so right now I will be adding an instance variable, name it function name, make it a text and for now I won't add anything and I will change to hello and make sure function name is say hello it takes a capital letter letter right there and so I will make a new instance of the same button but I will change the text to how are you and change the function name to how are you and a last button which is still the same instance of the same object type it's a different instance of the same object type my bad 
and how are you and me 